Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get quick started in DBT Cloud. We're using Snowflake as well. It's going to be very fast, very simple, and you can even get running in like 10, 15 minutes. DBT Cloud or DBT in general is basically a data transformation framework that helps you and your organization work together in a team, leveraging software engineering practices and basically changes and revolutionizes the way that you and your team works with data. We're going to directly jumpstart into Snowflake. Although this is a DBT video, I would say the easiest way to get started with DBT Cloud is by using Snowflake as a starting point. You need a database anyway. And in Snowflake, it's pretty easy to set up a Snowflake trial. You can do it in like one minute. I already did it here. Um, and once you got started, you basically have access to this Snowflake home screen. Inside Snowflake, you will see um, it's pretty empty. So you have the Snowflake sample data as a database. I already have an empty database here. We're going to use this um, for today. But most importantly, um, this is a, the way to start with DBT Cloud, the easiest one. Because if you go cl um, clicking on data products and select the partner connect, then you see a couple of vendor partners of Snowflake, which are directly launchable outside of Snowflake. And if we scroll down here a bit, we're going to see dbt. And you see, for me, it's already connected. So for you, you just click on it. You click on connect, um, and then you can basically launch it. And it spins up a dbt cloud trial. It automatically connects it to your Snowflake instance. It creates a database and a warehouse. And all those credentials are already put into dbt. So as I said, this is by far the easiest way to get started with dbt. Um, I'm not going to click on launch. I'm going to directly switch over to my dbt cloud IDE, but you would just click on launch and then um, you're basically going to be on this page or maybe on this page, depending, I would say, on, on luck. <laughs> so this is, um, as I said, dbt cloud, the software as a service experience of dbt. And this is like the dashboard of your dbt account. And my dbt account is, of course, the trial account here, and it has one dbt project. Each project basically represents one Git repository. And um, yeah, I want to give you a very quick overview of the UI. In the left, um, you have like a control panel where you can see stuff like develop, deploy, documentation. Um, we're going to directly jump into the develop part because that's what we're going to do today. We're going to develop a bit. Um, so I'm going to select the cloud IDE which basically lets me develop um, directly in, in this case, Google Chrome. You could also connect your Visual Studio Code to it. And um, for me, this is an empty dbt project, should be the same for you. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click here in the version control window on the in initialize dbt project button. And um, yeah, down here, you see a file explorer and you see the um, project initialization created a lot of um, yeah, files here, basically a couple of folders as well. Most importantly, the dbt project YAML, which indicates, hey, this is a dbt project. And you will see the version control already updated and it automatically detected that we have a lot of new files here and it basically wants me to commit and sync already. We're not going to do that, or maybe we're going to do that now just um, it already forces me to create a new branch for that and I'm going to put in a nice commit session uh, commit message uh, initialized new project and we can commit it here and now we're basically able to do something in dbt and you see um, the most or the yeah I would say largest part of your cl cloud experience is the file editor which, for example, in this case, lets me configure the uh, YAML file. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to start basically building our own stuff in dbt. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into the models folder and um, yeah, we want to get rid of the examples here because we're going to build a cool um, own example, right? So I'm just going to delete the whole folder um, with the example models. And um, yeah, we're not going to start. Um, uh, the first thing that you typically do in dbt is you tell dbt where to find your source data. And if we quickly jump back to Snowflake and we close this one and go back to our data, then we see that the Snowflake sample data basically brings us already a couple of sample tables. We have a very basic TPCH data set here with a couple of CRM data, right? So this is what we're going to use for today's example session. And we basically need this information here to fill out our dbt connection. So if we go back to dbt now, I'm going to go into my models folder. I'm going to create a new file. 
and th uh, this file I'm going to call sources.yaml. In YAML files, you will always find configuration um, stuff happening. So for my YAML file, I basically need to define sources. Sources are always the starting point of your dbt project. With a source, you will um, basically configure, as I said, where to find the tables inside the database. dbt always expects you to have data already there, right? dbt doesn't do the extract and load part for you. So I'm going to call it tpch. I'm going to specify the database where we can find it, which is Snowflake sample data. We saw that in Snowflake, right? Um, the schema that I want to use is tp ch underscore sf1 and I'm going to specify which tables to use. I'm going to add a couple of them uh, like I'm just going to start with two. I'm going to use customer and orders. Two of the tables that we saw inside Snowflake, right? And you can automatically see that dbt as soon as I saved my file automatically does something. So it, um, the one thing that we saw here, a couple of buttons popped up and we see the lineage graph down here being updated and it basically adds two new nodes here. One for the customer table, one for the order table. Already looks nice. I would say it's still not really, um, that doesn't generate any additional value right now, but it's, you can already imagine how this might look in a, a production project, right? So this is everything we need to tell dbt where to find data. And now we can basically do all of our transformations inside dbt, which we're going to do now. So you see for customer, you see the generate model button. We're going to use this one. And if I click it, you see a new, basically a new file opens up here already with some nice naming conventions. Oh, it disappeared again. This feature is still a bit buggy. I'm going to try it again. You see a stg underscore tpch underscore underscore customer dot SQL. So this is not a YAML file anymore. This is a SQL file. And you can already see here, this is actually SQL code. That's why it's a SQL file, right? And um, it automatically yeah, creates some code here based on the table. So it basically scans the table in the background and it puts all column names in here. It already gives some nice CTE names, which we're going to leverage now. So this CTE is called renamed. There's one piece here that might look unfamiliar to you, which is this one. And this is a source function. So we basically call a ginger function. So if double curly brackets indicate this is a ginger function that's called. And this helps us when stuff is moving around in our database because compared to traditional SQL, we don't put in the database name, the schema name and the table name. Instead, we refer to what we defined in our sources.yaml. We're going to see in action what this basically does in the background. And for now, I'm going to save my file. Now it should, yeah, you see it automatically creates the staging folder, tpch folder, and this file in my file explorer. And if I click on build when opening this model, I can see down here that dbt is actually doing stuff. And the other thing that you can see is this lineage graph updated, right? So you see this stage now references this source. And this, in the long run, right now we know it, right? But in the long run, this will definitely help you understanding the lineage of your project. In the meantime, a green box popped up. We see that our build actually succeeded and we can see a couple of details here. So for uh, once, we can see that this actually created a view inside this specific schema and it took like 0 0.6 seconds. And if we click on details, we can see what's happening in the background, right? So you see a SQL statement, create or replace view. And um, this basically being our model code that we just wrote. And you see the source function actually got um, transferred to a regular database.schema.table name. And um, yeah, if I just now jump back to Snowflake, and if I refresh my, ah yeah, you can already see here, inside this database, you now see my schema. And in here, there's a view, which basically, if I do a data preview, already has my renamed columns, right? So it was pretty easy to do this simple step of transformation. Of course, it was no magic. We just renamed a couple of columns, but we did this within seconds, right? So uh, the next and one of the last things I'm going to do now is based on this stage, I want to create a dimension, right? We have customer data. The staging typically just represents the first layer inside your data warehouse. So I'm going to create a new folder called Marts. 
for information marts. And in here, I'm going to create a new file called customer underscore D because I want to build a dimension dot SQL again because we're going to write some SQL. And in here, I basically now have a blank canvas to yeah, write my own SQL code. And what I want to do is, um, I basically, pretty simple, let's do it very straightforward. I basically want to select all my columns from the stage from, and I'm not going to use again a, a database.schema.table, but instead I'm going to use another ginger function, which is called the reference or ref function. And with this, I can basically, you already see the drop down here, select from another model without having to actually specify the physical location. And I'm going to, um, because this is a dimension representing the gold layer, I want to already do like a quick filter. Let me think about which filter might make sense. I only want to do, um, show customers that are, um, let's say, where the account balance is positive. Where account balance larger than zero I'm going to save this specific model and what I'm now going to do is I'm going to only click a compile. And if I do a compile, then basically dbt turns this one into actually executable SQL code. So in this case, this I expect this to be turned into SQL code. And you see here, it actually was turned into a, a database.schema.table name. So this is like a way of um, making sure that the SQL code that you are generating here looks fine and looks like you want it to be, right? So now I'm, uh, I would say, uh, happy with the code and I'm just going to click on build. And this will again be turned into a database object. You see down here it's doing stuff. You see it was already successful. Uh, the customer dimension was created. And um, we again in the details can see the code that has been used in the background. Okay, so I now made a couple of changes. Um, my version control reflects that. And I now want to um, commit my changes. So... We did a couple of things here, deleted um, example models and um, added sample stage and dimension. So this is um, yeah, in the background, there's an integrated Git repository, but of course you can also connect it to GitHub, Azure DevOps, whatever you use as a Git provider, and you can leverage everything like pull requests, um, CICD stuff, everything that you have in GitHub or wherever you are. And this is like pretty basic because it used the integrated Git repository, but for this is definitely going to be sufficient. So now it automatically proposes to merge this branch into main. If you would have this connected to DevOps, Azure DevOps, for example, there would be a create pull request button instead. But now we directly um, yeah, merged into main and we can now think about deployment. So in my um, trial account, I already created a deployment environment. This is, of course, something that you would need to do. I skipped this for the sake of the simplicity here. As soon as you have an environment, you can create a job. I created a job already. This job is configured to... Oh, I clicked on start. But um, this one is configured to do a dbt seed, dbt run, and dbt test. So three commands that are executed by this job. If we go back to this job... As um, you see, I started a execution of this job, which is currently um, yeah, doing stuff. And you see here these um, single steps executed by the job run. And the, typically the one that takes the longest is the actual dbt run, because this turns your models into physical database objects. I could even expand this here, but right now it's still empty. It, I think it has like a 30 second uh, reload. So now I just pressed on reload. You see this one is actually done already. It doesn't show me logs. I think that's a small bug in the UI. We don't care here because I'd still, uh, as long as it's still running, we can definitely, uh, we don't need to like trust what it shows us. It makes it a bit more trustful if we just wait until it's completed. It should be completed by now. It's still on running. Yeah, now it's a success. Great. So if we now go to the dbt run, we can see all the stuff that has been happening. Not a lot, right? We didn't create many models, but we can see that the actual stage view has been created and the dimension has been created. And you can see here, I configured it to use a separate schema for my production jobs, right? 
So if I go back now to my Snowflake overview, I will now also see a production schema inside my database with the two views of my stage and my customer dimension. Of course, you can set it up and configure it to um, create those in separate schemas, separate databases even. Um, in this case, I just kept it simple. In this video, you hopefully learned a lot. You saw a couple of things in action. We used some real data. We used some real uh, models, a couple of use cases that are not too far away from reality. This was a very short version, of course. We could talk hours about doing stuff in DBT. This was just a glimpse of um, stuff that you can do and stuff that I did already in, in DBT. To learn how to use DBT Cloud to implement Data Vault in your organization, watch this free webinar. Just scan the QR code or access the link. Bye-bye.